How's everyone doing today? Hello. Great, perfect. It's working. Awesome. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hello. How are you all doing today? I am so excited about this. I am actually going to be talking today about the four pillars that I have really identified as the, the things you need to live a wholly aligned life. And um, I'm actually also announcing a new mini course that I'm doing. I am opening the application for that um, later today once it's completed. And we are, it's going to be four weeks and it's going to really be a crash course in how to align your life and how to get your life to a point where you uh, realize that you are the number one priority, that everything that's around you is just a reflection of the vibration that you put out into the world. And as soon as you decide that you are going to live your life from passion and pleasure and purpose and power, then every door that you ever thought was close to you is actually going to be completely open to you. And that's what my mini course is going to be all about. So say hi when you pop on. I'd love to see who's here. Um, as you see, I'm not wearing my glasses. I am trying to not hide behind my glasses right now. And so um, I am realizing though that I am, I kind of need my glasses to read. So give me a second to read. I'm on Instagram down here and then Facebook up here. So hold on a second. Amazing and pixie-like hair. Yes, thank you. I was actually noticing that today. I need a haircut or I might just shave it again. Who says I should just shave my head again? Because I might just do that. Because doing my hair today actually was, it was weird. I didn't like having to do my hair at all. It sucked. Um, hi, JJ. Hello, everyone here on Instagram. Who are you? Barbie, Nikki, Rockout, all of you guys. Hello. So today I am, like I said, I'm going to be talking about, um, why you have to use, uh, passion, pleasure, purpose, and power to create a wholly aligned life. And uh, again, I'm announcing the opening of the application for my new mini course, which is how to put yourself at the top of your to-do list. And that's really what I've been really called to create, especially for parents and for moms who stay at home, for people who never invest in themselves normally, just to really see that transformation is possible in a month. Like you really can see massive quantum leaps in your life in as little as a month if you do the work. And this is where my training as a massage therapist actually really comes in handy because I know that this is not an overnight process, but I also know that it shouldn't take three months or six months or whatever to at least start seeing progress. Not that you're going to be completely healed and totally better and like, you know, some some people do. Some see, people see that sort of change all the time in their bodies when I work on them. But most people are going to see um, the beginnings of change and like really notice, oh yeah, I'm standing stronger. Oh, I'm able to create these boundaries or yes, I'm saying to yes in my life more often or whatever it is. Um, about a month is how long it takes. So that's why I created this mini course. And then it's going to actually be recorded and available on my website always for a lower fee since you wouldn't be part of the live process. And it's also going to include hot seat coaching, which is five minutes. So um, I'm just going to break down how this mini course is going to work really quick. And then we're going to jump into, into the the live itself because I know that's the meat of it and I'm really I can't like keep it in my body any longer and you know we'll see how it goes so the course is going to be four weeks it is going to start uh, the first week of October and we are going to go through and just dive into each one of these pillars uh, the four pillars as I call them um, more specifically and it'll be a live coaching call group call um, where I have uh, you know maybe some slides maybe some journal prompts you know whatever comes to me and feels appropriate for the group and it's going to all be recorded and then if you are a part of the first round you will actually have the opportunity to have five minute hot seat coaching on the call every week so that you can really dial into what your own specific issues are 
um, and still see like the camaraderie and the society that you have created within this this group in this course because people who transform with you are all a part of your soul grid like they're they're there for a reason the people that you go through these steps with are there for a reason even if you don't connect with everyone you might connect with one person who is like a soulmate for you so um the biggest thing also is that i'm like i said i'm going to record it and then it'll be available for a smaller fee but you again won't be a part of the live and um, like chatting and all of that stuff. So it's gonna be really awesome. So what exactly am I talking about? <laughs> um, a lot of you know that I have been working on creating a system for whole life alignment. And part of it is really about dialing in and really ch checking in with yourself. So the first thing I do with a, with a massage client is I do a body scan. I have them stand there in, um, you know, for women, a bra and, Know, maybe some boy shorts and then just in their boxers or some some shorter basketball shorts maybe some bicycle shorts and I assessed where their body's at and I look at them and we figure out exactly where they're at the same thing happens in therapy right you go to your therapist's office and they assess where you're at now this is really important for a therapist or a body worker because we need to know where the starting line is the problem is is that we don't usually teach our clients how to create their own starting line because um, there's not an ending point. When you start therapy, you think, oh, I'm going to be done and better. But honestly, you have people that end up spending 10 years in therapy and they find all the things that are wrong with them. And then they're still in more therapy and more therapy or people that get addicted to body work and they just, they want so much to get rid of the emotional burden that they end up getting massages all the time because they think that there's something wrong with them physically when it's not, it's emotional. Um, it's all interconnected. Your whole body from the tiniest atom out into the cosmos is all connected. It's all made out of the same stuff. So you can't believe that you're somehow disconnected from your mind, your body, your emotion, and your spirit. They're all, they all intermingle together. So because of this, um, I'm really trying to create a, a hello, Valerie. Hello, everyone. Micah, Greg. Julie, everyone, um, I'm really trying to create a system that is going to be um, re replicable. You can replicate it, um, <laughs> whatever that word is. Uh, not in a sense that I like to teach everyone, but I really want to be able to create a system for you because it it it's so much information. And so what came to me over the last week or so is that. I really have been working on what am I passionate about? What lights my soul on fire? What brightens my day? What gets me out of bed in the morning? That's what my passion is. That's what gets me moving. That's the, that, that fire element that create like go, 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 that warrior. Like that's what I'm passionate about. And that's what, um, sorry, the fire element and like what I love and what I want. That's the lover aspect of my life. Just like going after what I desire and really like feeling that draw into me. Right. And so then I also move on to, to, um, oh, I was right. Passion is the warrior. Pleasure is the lover. Sorry guys. I'm still working this out. That's why we have a mini course going on. So the passion is the warrior. Like you think about a warrior and like they're big and bold and, um, advocates, all these people that are just like really big um, players on the scene, you just feel their passion when they speak, right? So then the pleasure side of it is that lover aspect. What do you desire out of life? What what are you holding back from? This is everything from, um, from your sex life to your personal, um, personal life, uh, your self-pleasure, uh, practice, which is something that's really new to me, but I'm really learning that it's extremely, extremely important to know how your body and you are connected and feeling yourself through that and embracing yourself through that so that you can be more connected to, um, to all other aspects. Because if you aren't willing to put in the work for yourself, if you're not willing to show up and do what needs to be done for you, whether that's eating healthy or running or um, creating a business or um, masturbation or having sex with your partner or drinking tons of water or um, writing a book or singing a song or creating a play, like whatever it is that really 
brings you uh, joy and euphoria and ecstasy and all of this, that's, that's not the same as your passion. Your passion is, is your drive, but your pleasure is like why you're driven, right? And then the other side of this is your purpose. So your purpose is like your dream. Like I have a dream. I have the ability to, to create this thing and I desire this thing. And that's, that's your sovereign. That's your, your queen, your king energy that just, just emanates to everyone in the room that you know what you want. You know how to get it. You have a dream. You have a desire. You have a plan and it's going to get done and it's going to be beautiful and everyone is drawn to you. And this is why network marketing works so well and why people build these these tens of thousands of million dollar businesses doing network marketing because they they draw in these subjects with just their purpose. And then the sense of power too. So that's the power kind of holds it all together and that's the magician. That's just the magic happening where every other element of your life you've decided, you've set those standards, you've created, what it is that you want, what is your ideal man, what is your ideal child, what is your ideal house, what is your ideal life, and actually sat there and looked at what your ideal life is, and then deciding that you need to start taking the steps to create it for yourself. Your husband's not going to do it for you, your mother's not going to do it for you, your sister's not going to do it for you, none of that's going to happen for you, because it's not their job it's not their journey this is your journey your soul decided this journey in this time and in this space and has a desire that ideal life and if you can't create your ideal life then you need to to take inventory even more if you can't sit there and write out like what is it that i want when i'm in bed what is it that i want out of uh, my financial situation? What is it that I want out of my relationships? What is it that I want out of every aspect of your life? Then that is where you need to start because it, again, this is your life. And I've been talking about this for months and months and months, right guys? But I really was never able to articulate until I took back the walls and really started digging in and not doing what I call um, recovery light. You know, like you think about um, any one of us, we're all uh, affected by addiction in one way or another, whether it's us or someone we know. And you know that person that says that they're not going to drink. And then the first opportunity they have, they're going to drink. Or they make it like a month and then they drink some more. Or they make it three months and they drink. So, so each time they're doing a little bit more, but in the back of their head, they're still like, yeah, but I can drink so versus when they go whole when someone gets sober and they're like i am not going to drink again that is you know that they've made a commitment you know that that's their standard you know that that's their boundary and most recovering alcoholics i know are not mean about it they're not like oh yeah i don't drink anymore how dare you how dare you because they don't you don't have power over them like that they are in their own power in their own belief and they know that they don't need a drink anymore and Great, go ahead, you can drink. And maybe not at first, maybe you have to like really recede back and that happens a lot. So it's considered, a lot of people call that the dark night of the soul where you, you recede back because you're just so confused and you've gone too far down the journey and you don't know, maybe you should run back to where it's safe. And that's why you need these pillars, why you need these this whole life alignment toolkit. Like I think of like a, a warrior going into battle, right? But I, I think about it in um, in Zelda terms because I'm from the 90s. And he doesn't just have just his sword, right? He's got his sword and he's got his bombs and he's got his, um, his magic potions that he can drink if he's like about to die and his little fairy comes around and that's like, you can consider that your like conscience or your intuition that just like magically like, whoo saves you at that last moment where you're like, oh my God, I could have totally just died right there. Or the equivalent of death in whatever social situation you're in or whatever. Um, so that's what, what I want to prepare you with is how to create this list over four weeks. We're going to create each list in each area of our lives, but it's going to really be about 
seeing the transformation because again i work on someone in a massage setting and the first time maybe they don't feel great for like they feel great for the a day or two but then the next time i work on them they feel great for longer and then the next time i work on them you know maybe after the second time i give them a little bit of homework and i'm like okay what you need to do is you need to start focusing you really need to open your chest no more doing this you're never allowed to do this anymore or we work on sitting and where sitting is appropriate or we talk about shoe wear or walking barefoot more often because not only is it amazing for grounding it's actually fantastic for your feet they have found that the people with the best posture in the world are those who don't wear shoes very often at all and walk on the earth so those people who are actually in third world countries they're more connected to the earth in so so many ways and one of the reasons is because they actually don't wear shoes and they're more aligned and they don't have these same issues and um, chronic pain and things like that that we have here in the West just doesn't, it doesn't exist in some of these third world countries. And these are places where they'd rather hang out and talk with their cousin all day than go to get a job. And we would never, never understand that. So again, these are what I will be discussing in this course. Um, right now I wanna open it up for questions if anyone has any questions anything that's going on with them i get i have this feeling that someone has a really something's going on with them and if you want to ask that right now please do so i'm so excited about this course guys really excited because <laughs> it's going to be beautiful and then i'm gonna like i said we're going to record it so it's going to be available for always um for anyone who needs it so um doesn't look like there's any questions right now. So I'm going to go a little bit deeper into each one of these pillars just a little bit so that you can get more of a taste of what I'm talking about. So the, the passion part of it, passion is something that needs to be created in, um, in your boundaries, in what it is that you are willing to take in and what it is that you are are choosing not to and this again I think that the bigger discussion that needs to be had is about choice because it's something that not many people realize they're doing it on a daily basis every moment is a choice whether you accept a compliment or are offended that's your choice and this piece is so so important because it allows you to instantly instantly step into that sovereign queen or king energy when you realize that you are the commander you are the the sovereign the ruler of your entire space and this isn't to say that you are are a dictator or some like evil queen or king uh, i'm saying that if you are in a situation like mom specifically i, I told you moms out there that this was for you specifically so i'm going to talk to you specifically if you are in a situation where you are a stay-at-home mother and you don't understand your husband and you're constantly fighting with him and he doesn't seem like he's showing up and he goes off to work and oh lucky him he gets to go have social interactions with adults and you are super bitter and you don't understand why he doesn't want you anymore and you don't understand why you're constantly fighting and your kids are always on your back and you uh are having issues with your parents and just all this stuff's going on in your life it's compacting and stacking and it's exponentially getting worse and we call this um you know women they get depressed and they get anxiety especially women who work out and who don't work outside of the home and i'm not saying that work outside of the home moms don't get this i think that working outside of the home and being a mom is fucking incredible i don't understand how you do it because i um i just can't imagine what it's like to have to leave your kids and also um, what it's like to take off one hat and immediately get into the next gear so that's that's an amazing um, job but it's still taking off one hat and putting on the next our husbands do the same thing they come home and they have their little downtime or whatever they take off one hat and they put on the next hat it's really hard for stay-at-home moms to know which hat they're wearing when uh, we often end up trying to teach our husbands and they're not, we are not their teachers. We end up trying to mom our husbands. They are not our kids. And we end up 
overanalyzing and psychoanalyzing conversations that we're having with our husbands without realizing like we need to just take them at face value. Men tell the truth. They speak in very plain English and that's what they're talking about. It, you, there's no in between the lines. There's no, well, I feel that what you're saying is no, 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 no. Like you can't try to interpret what he's saying. What he's saying is what he's saying. So just listen to him and actually listen. Don't put it through some filter. Don't show up to a conversation with your husband about what's going on in your um, sex life and filter it through this idea that he has to, he must know what he wants. Cause maybe he doesn't know. Maybe he has no idea. Tara Smith, seriously loving your new hair. Oh, thank you guys. That's the second positive hair comment. Maybe I'm not gonna shave it yet. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tammy. Uh, awesome style of care. Look at the modern magician. Everyone loves my hair. Well, hello, everybody. Sorry, I, as you see, I don't have my glasses on and I miss like all these comments, but okay, I think I caught up. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, with the moms, we get into this with this programming. This just like wake up, we wake up with the baby, and the baby's awake. We change a diaper, and then we get up, and the toddler's there, and we have to make a waffle, and then we pack a lunch, and then we send the oldest off to school, and then we come home, or we're still at home, and we um, do the laundry, and we do, we go in and out, and then lunchtime and nap time and then we got to go pick up the oldest from school and then you've got all the after school activities and then you've got dinner time and then bedtime and then oh my goodness my husband's home but he's super tired because he's had a long day but now I finally have a chance to like sit down and conversate with him but now he doesn't want to talk he wants to veg out he wants to or at least that's what it seems like when really he's just tired like he's got a job he's working and thinking and men are so like one-minded not like single-minded because that sounds so rude but just like they focus on one thing at a time they're not as capable of multitasking and then you add in other aspects of each individual person and their human design and their natal charts and all these other things like doing your research and learning all about you helps you to understand and appreciate that your partner has all these crazy aspects of their personality and stuff going on with them and maybe you do a little research just so you have an idea of what you're working with but it's more so that you can start making them interested because when you start acting with more passion when you start having an idea of what you want when you start setting clear and concise boundaries your husband is going to show up and give you what you want because that's what they men do they're hunters they won't get what do you want i say this all the time right the scene from the notebook where Noah's screaming at, oh my God, why can I never remember him? Oh, it's easy, right, cousin? Anybody? Anybody? Wanna give me the name? <sighs> you guys know what I'm talking about. In the notebook, he's yelling at her, and he's yelling, Noah's yelling, what do you want? Hi, Allison. Uh, and she's like, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. He's like, it is that easy. What do you want? Just tell me what you want. And, you know, is it me or him? Is it me or him? But it's like that with everything. How often does your husband say, well, what do you want for dinner? And you're like, I don't know. It's not that easy. And he's all like, why? What do you want for dinner? Well, what do you want for dinner? He authentically doesn't know because he doesn't care because he wants to make you happy. Let me, let me rephrase, say this again. Your husband, when he tells you that he doesn't know or he doesn't care about where you eat or what movie you see or any of that, it's not because he doesn't love you. It's because he wants you to be happy and he wants you to tell him what you want so that he can go and get it for you and that will make you happy. But if you don't know what you want, he can't go and get it for you, and he's just stuck here, like, waiting, like, just tell me what you want, and I'll go do it. Tell me what you want, and I'll go do it. Anything you want. My wish is your command. I, what do you want, babe? Tell me what you want. I will do it for you. How many of you have had that, and you were like, you just don't care about me, and you, and you don't want to decide, and I have to make all of the decisions, and I wish you would just decide where you want to put the toilet paper, because I don't care where we put the toilet paper, but you do. You do. 
secretly, if he were to go move where you keep the toilet paper in the house, wherever that is, and he were to change it without talking to you first, without making sure that you were okay with the decision, you would lose your fucking mind. Don't lie. Don't lie to me. You can't pretend that you wouldn't. And I know some of you who are on here that for sure would lose your shit. You'd be like, why the fuck did you move the toilet paper? This is where the toilet paper goes, and this is why it goes there, and you would have this all these reasonings, blah, 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 and yet he did what you asked, which was make more decisions on his own, right? <laughs> Kathleen does <laughs> laughing at me. Um, so by going through the this laundry list, we, we take your, your whole life and we figure out, okay, well, what am I passionate about? What, what outside of my kids? Cause here's the, here's the real kicker guys. Here's the biggest reason why you have to learn how to put yourself at the top of your to-do list now when your kids are still young, because I have talked to many, many women recently whose kids have kids now. Okay. So the grandma and like, not just empty nest because empty nest is like kind of exciting and you know, oh, the kids are gone or whatever, but like past that, right? Where like they're lonely now or they don't know what they're doing with their life or like they've never had a job. They've never done anything except for mom. They maybe had kids really young and just kept having kids. And then at some point the husband came in and made a decision like, would it let me, I, I love it when women say my husband wouldn't let me have more kids because that's like, Here's my power. Would you like it, please? Really? Your husband lets you do things? That's like, if you have that conversation in your head at all, like, please, like, don't even worry about this. We need to be talking one on one because there's a lot more issue going on if you let your husband do things or he lets you do things. Sorry. Or if you let him do things like there's no letting that's, there's no allowance. You both are sovereign beings who are choosing to forge a path together and create a beautiful fucking kingdom in which you can rule and see the world and travel and do all this shit that everyone actually wants to do, but no one does because we get stuck working for the man because we don't know what we want because we're pushed through a societal system of education that teaches everyone how to be mediocre at everything and no one's a master of anything. And then nobody can get a job and no one can hold a job and you're living off the credit card bills and your life fucking sucks and you don't know what's up from down and you don't have any purpose and you just go through the motions and then you realize one day that you are a fucking mom bot. And then you try to say it's not your fault, which it's not because you didn't have the information. But the thing about information is that once you learn it, it is your fault if you continue to ignore it. You see, there's no shame in, um, in those people who didn't know that cigarettes were bad for your baby when you were pregnant. But if you know this and you continue to smoke a pack a day, then you're doing harm. And that's not cool, right? If you know that the only thing that you need to do to change your life for the better, and it would be a nominal amount, it's like, I'm charging like $444. Why $444? Because I love triple numbers and it's a four week course and it just seemed to fit perfectly. And we will get you through so many blocks so fast that you're going to look back and be like, who the fuck was I last summer? Like, damn, I don't even know her or him because I'm not keeping it closed. I know that mostly, um, this speaks to moms, but there's plenty of dads out there that this is their same situation. They have it different though, where they go to work all day um, and they come home and they try to unwind and the wife's just like trying to hand off the baton, like, oh my God, take over. And there's no respect. There's no connection. There's no like, hey, babe, how you doing? And even if you ask, they're not actually listening. And, um, and then they're in the same boat. Then they're trying to dad. They're trying to see what's going on. But wait, what's the new parenting thing? Are we are we doing timeout anymore or not? Oh, we're vegan now. Okay, cool. So like he can't eat cheese, and they're just trying to keep up because you're at home all day and you're just like, doo -doo 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 and then you add this extra piece and you continue just, doo -doo 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 -doo. and he's all like, hello, I'm not a piece in your 
your chess game. I'm like, you're king. I am here to help you make decisions like you're always saying you want me to, by the way. Remember. And you try to just throw them into the shuffle, right? And they lose themselves in, I'm the one that makes the money. I'm the one who has to be the mean one. I'm the one who's supposed to be good at sports and a handyman and all this other stuff, but they might not know any of that, but they're too embarrassed and too ashamed to let you know, and you would never listen anyway. I probably, I did it for a long time. I didn't understand why there was all this list of things to do that my husband kept saying he wanted to do, but never did. And I didn't realize it's because he doesn't know how to do them. So we need to either learn together or hire someone or whatever. But I just thought because it was a list of things he wanted to get done that it was something that he could actually do. And he was too ashamed to tell me like, I have no fucking clue how to do that. I do computers. I don't know how to resurface a bathroom or whatever the fuck it was because I would never hear it. I wouldn't ever listen. I would just be like, when are you gonna resurface the bathroom? When are you gonna do that? And he would never, I would never came to the conversation in a place where he felt safe enough to tell me that he didn't know how to do that. So he just would like shove it to the side and all these things that we just assume and women just assume this and we think this and we expect this and he's not showing up and he doesn't know what I want, but do you know what you want? Like really right now, if I said over the next 30 seconds, I want you to list out three things that you know that you want right now in your life out of your entire life, your sex life, your uh, relationships, your conversations, your friendships, your money life, anything like that, three top things right now, what do you want? You know what, let's do that right now. If you're watching, three things, and even if you're on the replay, three things right now, what do you want? Money, house, no debt, more babies, less babies, maybe not less babies, that would be what do you want? I want to see the comments. I'll wait. It's exciting. I don't usually do that. Walking drones coming up. Yes, Kathleen. Yeah, that's exactly right. Shall information is power. It absolutely is. It is, it is. Yep, that's exactly what moms are. Walking drones and monotony. That's, that's the mom bot. That's exactly what it is. And you hate it. And yet you won't tell anyone that hate it because you're supposed to love it and the worst part about it is guys your kids know that you hate it they know there's a reason why I've been posting all these things recently about don't care if you got anything done today because you picked up after them and you made them food and you let them crack the eggs and you know maybe one minute they're yelling at you and the next minute you walk in and they say mommy you're so pretty and you're thinking, oh, gross little kid. Like, you don't mean that. You don't mean that I'm so pretty. I just yelled at you. How can you think that I'm pretty? I'm disgusting. I'm horrible. I'm such a bad mom. And you're thinking all these things. And all your son or daughter did was try to have a moment with you because they're three. And that thing that happened in the kitchen totally doesn't even register to them anymore. Mama, you're so pretty. And yet, how many of us would never believe that? Or how many of us get to the point where we don't understand why our kids are acting a certain way and then we all of a sudden catch ourselves acting that way when we're out with friends and we're like, oh, that's where he gets it from. And how many of you get to the point where you're like, my list, you start yelling at your kids and you're freaking out that you didn't do the laundry and now you've got to get the grocery list done and the direct TV guy was here way late and stayed forever and blah, blah, blah. And you're freaking out and you're screaming and they didn't do anything. They've done nothing wrong. They've done everything that you asked them to do. And you're just so stressed out that you start screaming at them because you don't have the tools to go meditate. You don't have the mindfulness in your own body to be like, I am about to lose it. The tiniest infraction is about to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Like that shouldn't be a thing. You shouldn't be stuffing stuff down so hard that one tiny thing that your toddler does by spilling water on himself or whatever is gonna send you into a total explosion. It should be enough for you to be like, why would you ju Okay. 
water. We're going to clean up the water and I'm going to clean you up. And after I clean you up, we're going to set you down with your chill show and mommy's going to go and I'm going to go sit and I'm going to meditate for 15 minutes. And the baby monitor is going to be right there and everything's going to be fine. But you now have set the boundary that you are no longer available to yell at your children. You don't give that energy anymore because you know that yelling is more detrimental than spanking. You know that psychologists have now found that the part of the brain that's activated when you're being yelled at is the same part that's activated when you are being caused physical pain. So if you yell at your kids instead of hit them, don't think that you're like a better parent for it. It's literally the same, if not worse. And so we know we don't want to do that. We know that we don't want to yell, but we don't know what we should do instead. Now, this is something that I can't teach you because it's such a personal choice, but what you can do is take the time to put yourself again at the top of your to-do list to find the passion, to find the pleasure, to find the purpose and the power in your life, what you actually want in life, and then start putting that at the top of your to-do list. You start creating time. Time just appears. Right now, you've got no time. I would never have time to read a book. I never have time to take a course. Karen, how am I supposed to get on a call for two hours once a week for a month? Oh my God, I don't have time for that. You create the time. That's the magician. That's the part of you. That's the power. That's what is able to reprioritize your life where you realize that the reason why it's not in alignment is because it's not prioritized the way it needs to be. And once you set the priorities the way it's supposed to be, it all fits nicely. And maybe a piece escapes every now and then, but you know where it belongs because you've create the you've created the container. You know exactly where each and not in like a perfectionist way, because your container might change shapes on you out of nowhere. And that happens when a new piece of information comes in, when a new friend comes into your life, when a traumatic experience occurs in your life, your container gets shifted and the parts of your life feel so out of whack. But if you have actually taken the time to create your boundaries and figure out what you want out of life, it's a lot easier to orient yourself again. And it also allows for the ability to expand more easily when you already know what you're allowing in. Again, this isn't ignorance. This isn't someone fighting you and completely ignoring the scientific fact that the earth is fucking round <laughs> or whatever. Okay. That's not what I mean by like, you're going to orient your life and it's going to be aligned. It's that you need to, you're able to expand your life because you know what you are allowing in. And if things don't resonate, with you if they don't feel that they're at the same vibration at you, then you just ignore it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what people think of you. It doesn't matter what people think of your parenting. It doesn't matter what people think of your hair. Again, this is where it comes to being a, a choice. I could sit here and read these exact same comments and say here, guidance, financial, so guidance, financial stability, move out of Minnesota. <laughs> Those are good ones, Kathy. See? Those are really good ones, and we can work on all of those if you want to uh, message me. And But I could have sat here and re read these things. Your hair looks amazing, and you're just like a pixie. And love your hair, and awesome styling hair, and I love your hair. I could have heard of all of this through the filter of the fact that I spent five minutes fighting with my hair for the first time in months because before I shaved my head, all I did was like twist it up in a ponytail and I would like comb it and it was very simple. It was like really easy to have super long hair. This is like, I had to use pomade, like what the fuck? I actually use like stuff on my hands because it was all like crazy bait from swim lessons. So I could read all of these and I could in my head choose to read them as great. Everyone's fucking noticing my hair. What's wrong with it? Where's the piece that's off? Oh my, they're all just, they're saying that because they're being sarcastic. Nice hair, Karen. Love the hair, Karen. Right? Don't, how many of you do that, right? You read something and it's through your own filter. It's not how they meant it. It's not how it came through on their end, but through your own filter, you filtered it through and now it's totally gross and disgusting because you chose that interpretation. 
Instead, I'm choosing to take them how I am assuming they were given, that my hair looks fucking rocking, even though it took me five minutes to do it, and I was fighting and having an issue, and I'm standing in front of you, or sitting in front of you, and my power and my passion and my pleasure totally lit up and so fucking excited about this course, and I promise I'm going to get the application up, so I um, leave a comment here if you want me to send it to you privately. I tried to get it up before I went live, but it just didn't work out, and I wanted to be on time for my live. So now, it's been 40 minutes, perfect. Um, I am going to actually do that, and is there any questions, comments, anything like that before I let you lovely people go? This has been so fun. I really am excited about the course. Again, it's going to start in October, and it is going to be all about tapping into your own boundaries, creating your own four pillars of passion, pleasure, purpose, and power so that you can then fit everything else into your life, your your um, your home life, your work life, your relationships, your conversations, your your religion, your standards, everything like that, just really um, with you in the center. Because these pillars are here actually to prop you up because you are you are the piece of art. You are the you are the one that should be on the pedestal all the time. And you just have to create the pedestal that you sit. So I love you all. You have a great Tuesday, Transformational Tuesday, as they say. And I will talk to you all soon. And again, if you want a link to the application, send me a message. If not, I'm just going to set one here or make an extra poster, whatever. Okay. I love you all. Bye.